Um, if it's your very first time here in JHM, my name's Katie, and I'm so excited that you're here. So I've been thinking about this idea, this concept of strange but true, and I decided to do a little Google search this week and just see what kind of strange but true facts exist out in the world, which quite a few, by the way. So I wanted to share some of my favorites that I found that are coming up on the screen. So uh, the first strange but true fact that I want you to know about is, did you know that bananas glow blue under UV lights? Yes, Patty, it's weird but true. So you could eat a glow-in-the-dark banana. Okay, here's the next one. Cats can manipulate us with meows that sound like crying babies. The more terrifying part of this statement is that cats can actually manipulate us. I mean, that is terrifying to think about. Has anybody experienced this? A cat was meowing, or you thought it was a crying baby, and then you found a cat? Oh, that's terrible. Okay, strange but true. Here's another one. Uh, swims is still swims when turned upside down. That's exciting and weird. Is anybody's name like that? I kind of wish my name was like that. I think that would be amazing. Okay, another strange but true fact. This one's a good one. Mice in Central America can sing almost 100 notes. Is that weird? I, all I picture is like a mouse choir in Central America. Like it's Ratatouille, but the musical, you know, instead. Because they, they can sing. That would creep me out to be in Central America and hear mice singing notes. You might hear it here in the building. Um, okay, the next one is... In Japan, napping on the job is considered honorable. Do you know that's true, Paul? You've been to Japan, right? You can vouch for that. So you guys don't have jobs, but could you imagine at school if your teacher, you know, if you fell asleep at your desk and she was like, how very honorable of you that you have fallen asleep during class. That's what that means. Okay, here's another one. Oh, Lego has an underground vault with every set ever made. So there's 4,782 unique sets of Legos, and there's an underground vault that has every set put together, missing no pieces with the instructions underground, <laughs> okay? I think that's the weirder part, is that there's probably no pieces missing. Uh, baseball umpires used to sit in rocking chairs. So in the 1800s, when a baseball was coming on the scene, it was a hot new sport. The umpires calling balls and strikes did it from rocking chairs. Isn't that weird? It's strange, but it's true. I don't know why that ever went away. Because, you know, it's hard job being an umpire. Take a load off in a rocking chair. So here's the thing. Just because something sounds a little bit strange does not mean it isn't true. And I, I think it's in the strange moments that things kind of stick in our minds in a little bit of a unique way. So the thing about hearing weird stories is a lot of times those are the stories that we remember the most. When I think about God's word, when I think about the Bible, and there are some weird events, there are some weird stories in the Bible. And I was thinking to myself, why would God put in the Bible some of these really weird events that are sometimes like question mark type things? But when, the, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, gosh, if the weird stuff is what sticks out the most, if the weird stuff is the stuff that we remember, then why not partner a weird story with powerful truth. And every weird story that we come across in the Bible also has some things that God wants us to understand, some truths that he wants us to incorporate into our lives. And he uses some weird moments so that those things will stand out. So today we're going to take a look at another strange story with some truth that God has for us. And we're going to take a look at a weird event in Daniel's life. So the book of Daniel is a lot about, it's all about Daniel. And Daniel has some weird moments in his life. But he has this one kind of strange event. But this strange event, I think, communicates some cool truth to us. So let me tell you a little bit about Daniel. Okay, so Daniel loves God. He loves God. He is a faithful follower of God. He puts God, his relationship with God above all other things in his life. He prays every day. The Bible says morning, noon, and night. Daniel loves God. Here's another thing you need to understand about Daniel. He is a favorite. So there is a king, the king of Babylon. His name is Darius. 
And Daniel is the favorite of this king. He is the right-hand man, the number two guy. He is the favorite. And Darius loves him so much. He's his favorite so much that he's hoping when he steps down as king, he's going to pass it over to Daniel. Now, there's some people who don't like Daniel, some people that work in the government who are a little bit jealous of him. They'd like to see Daniel go away. They'd like to see him demoted. They'd like to see him to be, you know, not the king's favorite. So this group of guys gets together and they start to plot some ways that maybe they could get Daniel out of the position that he's in. They come up with this really weird idea. So they go to the king and they said, hey, king, how about you sign a law that says that for the next 30 days, next 30 days, anybody who worships anybody other than you or prays to any other god besides you, it it just puts anything above you. How about if we arrest those people and we feed them to lions? Okay, so, you know, it's weird. So they actually convince the king to do this. They, They... They convince him to sign a law that says, if anybody for the next 30 days worships anybody besides me, prays to any other god, puts anything above me, we are going to feed you to lions. Now, Daniel, his favorite, knows that the king is signing this law into effect. And these government guys who are jealous of Daniel know that Daniel loves God above all other things. So what does Daniel do when the king signs this law? He goes straight to God. He goes straight to God and he prays his heart out like he always does. And these government guys catch Daniel in the act like they knew that they would. And they bring Daniel before the king and they say, King, Daniel is praying to his God. He is totally devoted to God. He is broken the law that you signed about the next 30 days. So then the story picks up in Daniel Daniel chapter 6, verse 16. It's coming up here on the screen. Look up here. So they bring Daniel before him. So at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. Now here's the thing. Daniel is still the king's favorite, but this law is the law. The king said to him, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. All right, then this story picks up and Daniel is in the lion's den. I want to give you a little visual of this, so check this out. For disobeying Cyrus, Daniel is arrested and sentenced to death.
The next morning, Cyrus realizes he's made a terrible mistake. Sire, are you unwell? I haven't slept. Please God, I'm not too late. Sire, shall I call the physician? I've run, my friend! Open it. with you. Your God is real. Your God has saved you. Yes. Okay, so in verse 21, right after he says that to the king, verse 21 is coming up on the screen. Check this out. He says, Daniel says to the king, long live the king. May God, my God, sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. This story is weird. <laughs> I mean, it is crazy to think about Daniel going, it being sent into a lion's den and God rescuing him by shutting the mouths of the lions. The Bible talks about the fact that Daniel came out of that cave, out of that den, with not a scratch on him. Not a scratch on him, which is so crazy. If you read on in the story in, in Daniel chapter 6, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll see, read in Scripture too that um, the story ends kind of gruesomely because all those guys who were jealous of Daniel, the king threw all of them, their families, and their kids in the lion's den. And yeah, so it's like kind of a gruesome ending. But for Daniel, <laughs> it was a total happy ending. I totally encourage you to get into Scripture and read the book of Daniel. It's super weird, but God shows us some really cool stuff. So anytime you think of a lion, you go to the zoo and you see a lion, you look at your little cute stuffed lion in your room, you watch the Lion King. I want you to think of two words, the word devotion and the word faithful. Write those down anywhere on your outline in giant big capital letters, devotion and faithful. Lion's Den, Daniel, lions tearing people apart, but not because Daniel came out unscathed because of devotion and faithfulness. Now, I think Daniel's life, this, this moment has some potential to speak some truth into ours because this is a moment where we see Daniel's devotion and that devotion helps him to realize and experience God's complete and full faithfulness. So here's the thing. The first thing I want you to write down, this story is strange, but it's got some truth. And the first thing was this, is Daniel was devoted to God. Daniel was devoted to God. We see this in three different ways. He was devoted to God. See, he knew that the law was in effect. He knew that he could get thrown into a lion's den. I don't know if I personally would walk towards something if I knew that I was going to be thrown into a den of hungry lions. That feels kind of terrifying. But Daniel knew that that could happen, but he wasn't going to let anything come between him and God. He was totally and completely devoted. How did we see his devotion? Well, first he prayed. That was the first thing he did, and you can write that down on your outline. He prayed. It was the first thing he went to do after he found out that this law went into effect. He went straight to God. Daniel 6.10 is coming up on the screen. It says this, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day just as he has always done, giving thanks to God. So the fact that the first thing that he did was pray instead of be scared or bow down before the king shows his devotion to God. Now, being, when you're devoted to something, it basically means you're putting that thing above 
all other things. Another thing that showed his devotion was he asked God for help. He asked God for help. He asked for God's help. We saw in that moment that little prayer that he whispered, God, please rescue me. God, please rescue me. He showed his devotion because he believed that God could help him, and he wasn't afraid to put that help, to ask for that help. Another way that we saw Daniel's devotion is that he trusted God. He trusted. Go ahead and write that down. These three things show Daniel's devotion to God. He trusted. See, here's the thing to understand about devotion is Daniel followed no matter what the outcome was. He knew that he might not leave the cave, and he went in anyways. He followed God anyways. He was devoted to God anyways. Nothing caused that to waver. See, it's in our devotion to God, when we're devoted, that's when we experience the fullness of his faithfulness. It's in our devotion. We, we might experience some ups and some downs. Daniel had ups, if you read the book of Daniel, but I would say the lion's den was probably a low point for him, right? It was a down. But it's in those moments that we also experience God's security, his hope, his love, and his constant presence in our life. Daniel knew that. He knew, he, it didn't really matter what he was about to face. He knew that whatever it was going to be, he wouldn't be alone. So we see his devotion. So that's a truth in this story, that our devotion helps us to experience God's faithfulness. And that's the next thing I want you to write down. The strange story also shows us the truth that God is faithful. God is faithful. Devotion, faithfulness. Devotion, faithful. God is faithful. Now the word faithful means loyal, constant, never failing, never lets you down. Like that's faithful. Always there. Steadfast. Um, we root for a few teams and I've rooted for these teams pretty much my whole life. So I'm going to show you the five teams our family roots for. We root for USC, the Rams, the Lakers, the Angels, the Kings. I don't really care what you think about this, okay? So we root for these teams, and we have been rooting for these teams for decades. Now, these teams today are kind of terrible. They're not super great, okay? They're kind of terrible. We're struggling. Angels, we're struggling. Kings, not so great. Rams, jury's out, okay? So I get it, right? Um, these are, we're, we're not doing so great all the time. But here's, here's what we are. We are faithful fans. So whether our teams win or lose, we're with them. We're faithful. Whether they do great or they don't do so great, we're with them. Nothing causes us to jump ship or jump onto another team's bandwagon. These are our teams. We're faithful. Okay, times that by a billion. And that's God's faithfulness to you. That is how faithful God will be to you. You're doing great, you're winning, God will be faithful. You're doing not so great, you're losing, God will be faithful. Whether you're walking toward him or away from him, God will be faithful. Whether you love him or not, he will be faithful. Whether you put him above all things or you don't, he will be faithful. God is faithful. And in this story with Daniel, we see evidence of God's faithfulness. And it was in Daniel's devotion that he experienced that faithfulness. He talked about unfailing love. Unfailing love. Deuteronomy 7, 9 is coming up on the screen. It says this, understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. God is faithful. He will always, he, we saw him show up for Daniel. I don't know what you're facing, what kind of lion's den you have in your future or what's going on in your life. God showed up for Daniel. He will show up for you. God protected Daniel. He will protect you. God loved Daniel unconditionally, a love that never failed. He will love you without fail. God was faithful to Daniel. We saw it in this moment, in this story that happened a really, really long time ago. But the truth is that that same God's, the, the same faithfulness we saw in Daniel's life that God gave, God gives us, you and me. He is faithful to us right now, today. So, 
kind of a weird story, but it was in Daniel's devotion that he experienced God's full faithfulness. So, again, lions, lions eating people. If you ever think of that, I want you to think of devotion, and I want you to think of faithfulness. Two powerful truths to understand. See, God has this best life for us. He, he will be faithful in this life to us. And when we're devoted to him, when we choose him, when we go to him, it's in that devotion to him that we really experience this life that he has for us. So what does that look like for you to be devoted and to experience God's faithfulness? He will be faithful. Your thought for the week is this. Our devotion to God will always lead to his best for us. Our devotion to God will always lead to his best for us. God loves you today so much. The same things we saw God do for Daniel, he will do for you and for me. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for each person who's in this space with us. God, no one's here by accident. Father, I pray that as we leave here today, you would remind us of these truths, that you are present, you are with us. Sometimes it feels like we are facing lions in our life, God through friendships or family or tough moments, I just pray that you would remind us that you are present, you are with us, we're not alone in all of those moments that we might have this week. God, thank you for loving us just the way that we are. Pray these things in Jesus' name, amen.